I'd like to thank everyone for inviting me here to speak tonight. Um, I'd like to try and keep this as light as possible and uh, hopefully try to do, uh, do a little bit of a comprehensive overview of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis for you. First of all, on this first slide, that building is a picture of the Emory University Hospital where I did my cardiology training. Um, Emory has been established as a major cardiac center for, over, uh, for decades now, really over a century. And uh, we're very proud of the basic and clinical research that goes on there. We like to offer it in stark contrast to our brethren to the north at the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> um, I like to keep this uh, to a medium length. I don't want to make it too short so that um, I want to make sure that we cover all the basic things that I'd like you to know, but not too long so that you fall asleep. First of all, why is this important? Well, for the last number of years, if not decades, heart disease has been the number one cause of death in this country, um, followed by cancer, stroke, and then lung disease, and, and you can read the rest. So heart disease is, a major of a, is of major importance in our community. Heart disease is typically caused by atherosclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries. Atherosclerosis also can contribute to strokes, peripheral vascular disease, aneurysms, and a number of other medical conditions. So I'd like to start with a quick case presentation. This is a man whose initials are JT, who came into the emergency room with chest discomfort, a choking sensation in his throat and neck, he felt sweaty and very short of breath. In the emergency room, his heart rate was actually slow and his blood pressure was low at 88 over 54, and his respiratory rate was 24 breaths a minute, so he was breathing very fast and hyperventilating. When we took a look at him, he was cool and clammy, as if he was in shock, and it was clear that he had water in the lungs on physical exam, in addition to a loud heart murmur. Now, in the emergency room, the first thing that we would do is what's called an electrocardiogram because it's very rapid and often very diagnostic. And these waves and squiggles might not mean a lot to you, but we can glean a lot of information from it. These leads over here show an elevation of this line, which is really classic for and diagnostic of a heart attack. So one thing that we might choose to do is an echocardiogram, and this is an ultrasound of the heart. What we're looking at here is the top wall of the heart, or the anterior wall, a couple of the valves of the heart, and the bottom wall, or the inferior wall. And what you might notice is that while this wall, the anterior wall, is moving nicely, the bottom wall